Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's a meaning of one of his hadith, and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that on the day of judgment, there will be some people who they will be very close to Allah, and they'll also be very beloved to Allah. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, this is his communication to the Ummah. And he has given us such a direction that the Ummah, they can, so they can attain the rank and the status in the hereafter. So brothers, every human being, every person is the same. That nobody has more or less Allah Ta'ala has given us all the same future than the body if we look at our hearts and our eyes and our hands and our body our eating and our drinking and our walking everything is similar for a person so Allah Ta'ala has made the human being afzal the superior form of creation and so that because he attains taqwa he acquires taqwa so a person he is not less in, in front of Allah in, front of, in, in regards that he is rich or he is poor or he is beautiful or handsome or he is black or he is white or he is tall or he is short. Allah Ta'ala doesn't differentiate on these points. To Allah, the person is good, doesn't matter if he lives in a mud shack or if he is a normal person in the dunya or he's a very commonly known well, but if he's got wealth or he hasn't got wealth, but if he has the wealth of taqwa, then he, in the eyes of Allah, is very great as a person. Straightforward differentiation. So he can't present anything to Allah that Allah, he's rich, this person, or he's got more things in the dunya, put him to the front, put him to the back. This is, yes, the classification in the dunya that people use, person who has more money, everybody starts to give salam to him. Yes? And he's not even going to give money to those people. But even then, they are in awe of that person. And when, for example, you respect somebody more due to the things of the dunya. So for this reason, those people, there's this competition and classification that, oh, look, let me get a big car, a nice car, so that people give me more salam, so that when I'm outside, people respect me. Yes, and he earns money for this reason, he buys a big house for this reason, he buys a shop for this reason. He has a nice house already, where he's living, beautiful house, nice rooms, and he's passing his time nicely, but no, I need something more posh. This word of posh, let's go to a posh area, let's move. So this is a disease. 
This is a deed. A person doesn't get elevated through these things. The Quran tells us this. Why are you mad going after these things of the dunya? So much time you're wasting. I want to be posh, live in a posh area. This time you're wasting. Leave this house, go into a posh location, posh area, waste his time and does haram actions and commits fraud. And how much he has wasted the time of his life, the foolish person. And that time's gone. That time's gone, it's finished. Uh, for example, if you give hundred pound to somebody from that fifty hundred fifty pound, he gambled it away. He's lost it. And what's left? Fifty or forty pounds. He's got to now spend the rest. So there's a difference in it. So that hisab that person's got to give. That whilst you want to become posh and posh, so why doesn't a person do that work? That do that action that go, takes you close to Allah. That's why Rasul has told us these things. He's mubashiran wa nadira. Allah Taala said that this is his quality. That is such a great personality and the Prophet of Allah who's coming and Allah gave him a task, a duty that give people good news, glad tidings, explain to them Jannah is like this, there's so much in Jannah, this and this and you'll get this. When? When you do these actions before that. It's good news. Good news. And then also a warning, beware, don't do this. Because Jahannam is also a very bad place, very dangerous place. Save yourself from it. Ulil albab, the people of wisdom, understanding. And the people of wisdom, they read the Quran in the same way, they understand the deen the same way, they go to the pious people the same way, they have a sheikh for the same reason. They don't run around in the dunya for no reason. Oh, he's my sheikh, go to that sheikh, go to that teacher. He's got more knowledge, he's got more Quran. Istakamat, steadfast on one path. That here from this source I'm learning deen, that's it. I'm learning sunnah here, end of story. I don't need to go anywhere else. So it's not the case that, for example, you can choose and select the deen according to your own will. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I like this, I'll do this. And I don't like this, I'll leave this. Oh, this man, I like him, he's teaching. He's my teacher and I leave this person, I don't like him. You have your own classification. No, where you learn about Allah and Rasul and you are implementing that learning. End of story. You don't need to look for anyone else. That you have recognized Allah, then be firm on that path. Be firm on that path. You don't need to look for more after that. So for people like this, a very big warning, strict warning has come for those people who run around left, right and center, changing their course. They're foolish people and they are uh, under the trap of their nafs and shaitan. And they, haven't, they want to practice the deen, but they're playing with their own desires with their nafs. So such people, can they be successful, tell me? That for example, if you dig a hole here and a dig a hole there and a dig a hole, you'll dig a hole all your life, you won't get to a well. But one place in sale, if you dig the hole, the water will come out. The well will come. So this is the reason that nafs desires, a person follows them, he follows his own opinions and he runs around like a headless chicken, that he's just running after dunya, he wants a sheikh, that he attains in the dunya, that he can tell me things according to my desires and my will and my opinions. I need a sheikh like that as well. Yes, and I want the Quran like that as well. And even the translation of the Quran, he wants in a way to fulfill his does. Whose translation is this? Oh no, it's too strict. Who's is this one? Oh yeah, that's enjoyable. I'll, I'll read that translation. In other words, everything regards the deen, he wants to be, to fit according to his needs and requirements. So the Holy Prophet ﷺ, what he taught us, and such a clear uh, piece of news to the Ummah that he's given. And the Qiyamah will come tomorrow. إِلَيْهِ turjaun. Very quickly you have to return to your Lord. Very quickly. Yes, كُلُّ نَفْسٌ دَائِكَةُ maut. In this same verse, isn't it? In, uh, 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 amongst these verses, first Allah Ta'ala says this, that death definitely is going to come certainly is going to come to every living being. And it's not that anybody can reject this. If he rejects, he can. But the next time, the next day he may pass away. So there's no home in the world in which somebody has not passed away. Is there any home? Any family? So how can a person reject the reality of death? Any religion, any thought, any opinion, any background, any culture? He can't reject death for the fact that even in their own homes, people they know have died. Their relatives have died, their friends have died. So how can anyone reject the reality of death? Such a dalil is given with regards to the akhirah, subhanAllah. And from here, a person should have iman and become a Muslim. That this deen, religion is, is confirming such a great fact, such a great fact in which there is no other dalil that this deen is full of haq and truth, end of story. 
But those people who don't want to follow, who have fallen to pray of their nafs and shaitan, they don't accept the haqq. They just live the life according to the nafs. Everything in my life should be according to my desires. Religion according to my desires. Sheikh according to my desires. Masjid according to our desires. Deen according to our desires. What we want, we want it that way. That's it. And if it's something against our will or our character, no, I'm not interested. So according and close to Allah, it's stated that we are all equivalent. But what is it that elevates a person or demotes a person? It's not beauty, it's not your nose, it's not your handsomeness, it's not your color, your complexion, or money. What is that differentiates? Taqwa is what differentiates in the eyes of Allah. And what is the meaning of taqwa? Beautiful definitions coming. Say subhanAllah. Very beautiful definitions coming for us people who are jahils. What is taqwa? That Allah Ta'ala's desire and will to follow that path and to reject the call of the nafs. This is the definition of taqwa. That's it. To live your life according to the will of Allah and you have become a muttaqi. Say subhanallah. So it's not that you've got horns on your head or you have to give a certificate or proof or for example that you can say whilst you're lying down on the bed that if you have the right intention you can become a muttaqi. There if you promise to Allah, Allah I raise my hands and I am a disrespectful man from today I promise that I will live my life according to your will from above the heavens Allah will announce that this person is a muttaqi. And for the muttaqeen, Allah Ta'ala has promised the whole Qur'an, all the promises Allah has made. Say, subhanallah, the good news of which people? For the muttaqeen. Muttaqeen. Not for the ghair muttaqees. Allah has not promised anything good for anyone who is a ghair muttaqeen. Who hasn't got muttaqeen. All the promises, the good news are for those who have taqwa, the muttaqees. Yes, but we don't want to become muttaqi. We want everything else in our life. But we don't want to be muttaqi. Make me a peer, make me a teacher, make me a khalifa, make me a scholar, make me this. We have all desires. I want to be this, I want to have learning and technology. Thousands of lines in the deen. But nobody's ever sat down and contemplated, how do I become a muttaqi? Nor do we tell our children how to be muttaqi. Until today I haven't seen a man, he says, I want to make my children muttaqis. I want to make him this. I want to make him that. But they don't say, then take the name of the deen as well. There are many subjects of the deen. I want to make him this. I want to make him this. But no one, until today, I've not heard anyone say. That person says, oh, leave all these things. First, I want to make my children muttaqeen. So when I, is anyone like this? Have you ever heard this? That what your children are doing? I want to make them muttaqis. Have we heard this before? Yes. Oh, in the dunya, he's a doctor, engineer, he's this and that. I'm religious, I'm this, I've got knowledge from titles that will elevate our name, will take. And so I have respect in the world. And people come and ask me, oh, he's this and he's that. But yaar, there's one statement, a beautiful statement. A fakir said this, Allah, that these people don't remember death. They've forgotten the death. Those people of belief in death and certainty, they don't speak like this. Every moment, every second, every thought, every thought will be what? That about death. Preparation for the death. They have no other concern, no other worry. So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, that on the day of judgment, which is a real fact, truth, the most beloved people and closest to Allah who will be those people? The Sahaba were there, the noble companions. There weren't people like us in Bolton listening. Not like us. They were the noble companions, the Sahaba Ikram. They were desperate, eager to hear. Who will they be close to Allah on the Day of Judgment? And what was being taught here? Amalan, physically, that if you do this, Amal, whoever does this action, he will become that person close to Allah on the Day of Judgment. No condition. If he does this Amal and the other person does the Amal, he won't be able to do it. No, this is the beauty of Islam. That it treats everybody equally, beautiful. That one amal if Rasulullah distributes, then it's for the whole ummah. Whoever wants to take it, grab it and practice it. That's it. This is the name of Allah. Yes? This is the name. Is this not the name of We don't know this. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Subhanallah. What he's saying? He's given us an ummah. He's throwing an action to the ummah and saying, who's going to pick it up? Say Subhanallah. So this is the enjoyment that whoever sitting here today, everyone put your hands up. Subhanallah. Allah, I'm so grateful to you. What an amal that's come to us after today. Definitely this amal will come into our life. This is the ummah of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. They react and respond. They sit with fikr. Open your eyes, open your ears. Attentive. I don't know what my shaykh's going to say today. Let me listen carefully. Have this intention. 
thought that today I'm going to the majlis, gathering something new, new learnings, my heart will open. But now we come here to run away. Oh no, no, I don't like this. Leave this, leave this. This is too hard for us, too strict. Let's leave the majlis. Let's, leave. Well, let's go to another sheikh. Third sheikh, fourth sheikh. Takes a minute today. Go onto the internet, Google, type in a sheikh. Oh, this, this is the sheikh, this sheikh. Choose which sheikh you want from the internet. Yeah, easy to select. Whichever type that fits your desires. Brother, it takes a minute. Just type, type, type. And it's Google and other browsers. And you can say, this is my requirements. These are my likings. Until I haven't, today I haven't heard. Sheikh, type it in. All the lists of the sheikhs will come. And their fig pictures as well come nowadays. Over. Sheikh's pictures also come. This is all game and drama. Look at this. The biggest news the Quran has given. End of story. End of story. So have we understood what was I explaining to you before? I told you the hadith. Beautiful hadith. The meaning of the hadith is the Holy Prophet is saying clearly. Clearly. And we are listening to what he's told. The ummah. That do you want to be close to Allah on the day of Do you want to be this? On the day of Qiyamah. Qiyamah is the person who's died. Qiyamah has come. Yes. He's gone to the next phase of life. Just like we're here waiting for what? I don't know if you're waiting. But we're waiting for what? For moat. For death whilst we're on this earth. This is the place of waiting. We're waiting. The definition of world is waiting. Just like you're hungry or if you're on a train. If you ever go on a train journey. Or let's say a plane journey. Plane's about to come. And you're waiting. And that waiting, waiting. Don't you get hungry? Don't you get thirsty while you're waiting? Don't you feel like eating or drinking? You're drinking water. You're hungry. And you have to go urinate. And all actions of life. But what are you waiting for? Say. For? For? The plane to land to take you. Same way in the world when you're living, you're worried, worried, waiting for death, death. You're hungry, you're thirsty, children come. But his focus isn't on the dunya. He's waiting for the death to come. SubhanAllah. Do you understand the example I'm giving? That's the life in this world. Just like today, we're waiting for things. Same way in waiting for death. He doesn't think the person who's waiting for death, preparing for death, he doesn't get put off by the world, the obstacles. So he stated... The, the person who is waiting for death, those who wait for death, then he says, oh, this is important pillar of life coming. This phase of life of breathing in this world, when it finishes, the next phase will come after mouth. So for those people who are waiting, and preparing, if we have yaqeen, and really we are waiting for death, then it's very important for us. As soon as we die, whoever dies, qiyamah has come. It's established. Second phase starts straight away. There's no lull in between. So what are we waiting for? We're not waiting for the day of judgment, we're waiting for death. When we go to the next stage, then death goes. Then what do we wait for? Then after dying, whilst we're in the next phase, then we're waiting for Qiyamah. This is the learning. Yeah, then the next phase will start. Yes. So, for example, oh, he's, he's passing away. Oh, for example, when's the, the trumpet going to be blown, etc. We don't need to be concerned about the moment. First, we need to be concerned about death, the mode. So do this amal, said Rasulullah Then when you do this amal, what will become? At that time, then that day when Qiyamah comes quickly, which is your death, on that day you will be the beloved of Allah and very close to Allah, if you do this amal. If you do this amal. So, what makes a person close to Allah? Amal. A certain practice. Amal, physical deeds. Whoever does this deed will pass the test. Yeah, it's not talk. No empty talk. Amal is what we need. So Allah's Rasul he gave us this example that there's this amal, this action. If we do it, then at the time of death we will be close to Allah and be the beloved of Allah. So the Sahaba Karam, they requested, Oh Prophet of Allah Sallallahu what is that amal? So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu then explained that deed. What is the Amal brothers? He said that these will be those people, subhanallah, these will be those people who do tazkiyah on their batin, they purify their batin, and due to that their akhlaq will be on the high level. Yes, their batin will be pure. The whole life they prepared for their death through which action? Tazkiyah, purification, cleaning their batin, through purifying their batin due to the cleanliness of the inner state, their akhlaqs will be on the high pedestal. These are those people. So this is our destination. This is our objective. Now let's see how many people are implementing this practice. 
the, all the actions we do according to our liking and desires. And we say that this action that we're talking about today is the preference of Rasulullah Sam says they're benefiting what Rasulullah Sam is saying or what we want. No, I'll do this, I'll do other things. No. Tell me straightforward. What? That tazkiyah of your nafs, you must do that first and foremost. Prepare to, to purify your batin. And, and to clean yourself with him. This is the most beneficial action. Such a high status, those people on the Day of Judgment. Allah's mahboob individuals will be, they'll be clean and pure. Allah said in the Quran. That Allah says, I like those people who are pure. Allah says, Wallahu yuhibbul mutatahirin. Those people who are pure and clean. And so when their batins will be clean, and they're clean internally and pure, then they become fantastic human beings. Their akhlaq is on a good level. Yes, that person, he is on a high level of akhlaq at that time. And with that, Rasulullah said that those people who don't clean their inner state and they're not working hard to purify their batin, then about them as well, Rasulullah has defined to us that what are those people? Yes, they put fragrance on their bodies, they put scent on their body, and they wash their face a lot, and their clothes are clean, and they've got kalaf and starch uh, before they iron them crisply, and they wear the best clothes, clean clothes, and they're very fussy about what they're wearing. They spend an hour or two on shopping, hours on shopping. Yes, but they're not pure. Pure is that person whose batin is pure. Whose batin is pure. Yeah, because everyone else, after you, everyone's got a bathroom at home, whether you believe in Allah or don't believe in Allah. So what do we need from this purity? Everyone's having a bath, washing themselves, putting shampoo and soap, whatever's coming, we utilize it. Yes, whatever soap gets released, we buy it and we use it. And we think that everyone else is doing that to get clean. They're pure and we're pure. No, purity, Allah says, who are the pure people that are like? Those who purify themselves within, inside. Batini, mutatahirin are those people. The pure people, pak. So their daraja Allah Ta'ala has said that they're so pure and elevated them women folk and the men folk due to purity automatically and purity is such a thing. For example, you go into the bathroom to clean yourself and when you have a bath and come out you have no need to say to anyone I'm clean. Physically everyone will say oh he's very clean and nice and sparkling and glowing. Yes, you don't have no dalil is needed because you've gone in the bathroom, the water was running, you've come out wet. Obviously, he doesn't need to say, look, look, I'm clean, I have to prove it because people will accept he's come out of the bathroom. He's clean, isn't it? So that's a fact. So in the same way, those who are pure within, inside, subhanAllah, purity, they have cleanliness of their batin, then inside them, what do they have? All the dirt has been expelled. Allah says they are pure, clean. Come back to me, Allah says, come to me. And that is the means to Allah's qurb nainis. There's no stench or bad smell inside that person. So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, clearly, those who don't do this action, those who don't do this action, then it's stated, just like those who are purified and they're clear, and close to Allah, Allah says, I'll reject those people and they'll be far from Allah, those who don't, Allah will dislike those people. Yes, on one side is Mahbub, beloved of Allah, on the other side, those who don't do this, they, Allah said, I will discard them, reject them. Allah has given us a clear announcement, direction, guidance. Why? Those people who don't purify themselves, look, for example, your beard and your face, if you don't clean it, if you don't look after it, for one year, if you don't clean your beard, then there'll be lice in your hair, there'll be smell coming from you, and germs and bacteria, because you haven't cleaned yourself. If you don't clean your house, there'll be germs and bacteria and dirt. So in that heart, if there's no been cleanliness, purification of the heart, a person's never looked after his heart, then tell me what will be created within that person? What will develop within that person? Such diseases and illnesses within that person. So this is the difference that Rasulullah is telling us, that those people who clean themselves, purify themselves, their khlaq becomes on a high level and they're close and beloved to Allah. Those who don't do this, those who don't do this, then there are two groups. One group, group A, those people who work hard and make effort on the purification of their batin, and there are the other people, group B, who joke against them. Oh, they're wasting their time. And they think that he's wasting time, they have no need to purify their batin. I'm doing this action, that action, this ibadah, that ibadah, nothing at all. Let me tell you now one hadith, so that you understand. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu from this hadith, He has told us clearly, that let me also tell you, that such a dangerous diseases are developing within that person, what does that human being become? Who doesn't do his tazkiyah, 
who doesn't purify himself, who doesn't clean himself. So it's our choice. It's our choice. Think for yourself. That, for example, if somebody's inviting you, come, purify yourself, clean yourself, wash yourself. Allah is saying that this way you can clean yourself and purify yourself with this method. Will you say he's wasting his time and talking rubbish? Yes? Oh, he's doing piri muridi? Oh, he's tricking people? Oh, he's wasting people's time or our time? Or just do what you want. Don't tell me what to do. I'll follow my desires. Or should we listen to him? Allah is Nabi saying, definitely he'll be dirty and pure if he doesn't follow this direction. And the biggest statement, the biggest thing here is that within that person, what thing, what disease will be developed within that person? What illness? That, that these are the words of the hadith I'm sharing with you. That rubbish, and he'll be a master of talking nonsense. Of talking rubbish. Whatever he speaks from his mouth, he will speak nonsense. And the Sahaba Kram are listening to this. So what we realize and learn is that when human being, when inside him the disease is spread and the illnesses, then he is exposed as well, physically in the world. Allah Zambi Zambi said clearly that inside him he has the habits, he starts enjoying these bad habits. That definitely inside, internally, he is impure. And he can't be hidden, he's exposed physically to the world. You can see and realize that person for what he is. Two signs have been explained here about that person. What? That he had becomes habitual in talking rubbish, wasteful talk, nonsense talk, and uh, accusations, lying, rejecting someone, swearing at somebody, criticizing somebody, dishonoring somebody. This is his common practice every day talking nonsense. And when he speaks, he'll open his mouth out and he'll shout and he'll claim that he's right and he'll show off to people and claim that he's something. The Sabah Karam that they will have understood this but people like us for us to understand better they asked another question on top of that so that the matter becomes even clearer yeah I'm not explaining the Gita to you I am sharing the Hadith to you here Hadith yes with the meaning with the meaning I'm telling you with the meaning when I read this whatever I understood I'm sharing with you where did I read this from studies from I won't tell you yes I have also have Ustad that I studied with and I learned from yes so what a beautiful style of this hadith, how it's running this hadith. So the noble companions, the Sahaba Ikram, they requested another question. That, oh, Prophet of Allah, so some, we've understood everything what you said up till now. But this point we haven't understood. That he'll open his mouth loud and talk rubbish and nonsense. This we didn't understand this point. What does this mean? What does this mean? That How does this happen? That what will be that disease, in other words, they're asking? What will be that disease due to which you'll have these bad habits? So Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi then responded and gave the gift to the Ummah because this was the condition that we have to understand what are they asking him, what's the reason they asked this question. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, yes, he will open his mouth and talk rubbish. For which reason? Because he has a disease and illness within him that's developed and grown. It will be such a big disease, inside him such a big disease, that it's Ummul Khabai. It's the mother of evil. The mother of all illnesses, very dangerous disease he'll have within him. Imagine, and who will have that? Those people who do not have concern and worry and they don't try and make effort to do uh, purification of their bath. And say, Alhamdulillah, are you trying yourselves? Are you trying yourselves? Yes, because I don't have any other relationship with you. Why is Allah Ta'ala created love between us so that I can become clean and you can also become clean? Yes, so for this reason we are doing all of what we're doing to purify ourselves. What other reason are we doing this? Tell me. That, put your hands up, for example, you're saying, I want to become Abdul Qadir Jalani, or I want to become Junaid Baghdadi, or I want to become Bayezid Bastami, or Rabi Basri. Is there anyone who's got this near? Is this why you're doing uh, Tazkiyah? We don't want to become anything. According to the statement of the past predecessors, we want to become true and good human beings. So that... So that when we're presented to Allah, we can be there as appearing as mutakis, not as a swine and animals. There will be these forms and images where we want to be presented to Allah in the form of a good human being. And thereafter, there's no other objective we've got for what we're doing. 
No, the butcher, whoever this disease, I want to become pious and this and that. Then what are those people? They will become nothing at all in their life. And then how will they become good human beings if they have some other niyam? Allah has given us an opportunity that purify your bath and inside you because you've got the disease. If you don't start this action now, if you don't make effort now, if you think this is a minor, it's not important, tazkiyah is not important, and you don't put, make effort to improve your akhlaq, then listen, what disease will be developed with you? And then definitely you'll be within those people who don't make effort. How can it not be? How can be that Rasulullah is saying this and that disease don't come. This is a very great hadith. What's the disease? Rasulullah said that he'll have a disease within him and a dangerous illness. Yes, and all other uh, sins come from that. That is kibar and takabur that person will have within him. Kibar and takabur. That the whole system of the dunya around us, the first event at the time of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and shaitan, this was the clash, the quarrel, the detachment was due to this. Due to this, that he was expelled and thrown out of Jannah and thrown down to the world because uh, shaitan, he had kibber within him. Kibber, pride, haughtiness, challenging. You see this, isn't it? So what is developed in that person? The illness kibar. But those people, alhamdulillah, who do tazkiyah, work hard and effort, they try to go on the path of tazkiyah. And they, do you today understand what, for what purpose we're sitting here? Those who have understood, put your hands up. If you understand why we're here today. We've come for this reason. That we want to clean ourselves, purify our batin. Purification. Yes? So here, now... Shaitan and all opposition forces will, will try hardest for us not to follow this path. From one sheikh, take him to another sheikh, to another teacher, to another khanka, to this place, to this institute, to detract him, to distract him and deviate him, to waste our time. He'll make us waste time. He'll so say, look for the dreams and he'll make enmity between people. And, and he will come in different forms and images. Do this action, do this action, do this. But no, stick firm to your way. Remember, always follow that path of Dahiri. If you can Sunnah, Sharia, Quran, there's a matter of thousands of dreams come in opposite to that. Reject them. Reject them. Where you learn Quran, Hadith, practically Sunnah is coming into your life. Should we reject that and run after shaitan and dreams and visions? No, no. Look for the physical practice of the deen. Yes. So if you got everything in that sheikh, in that teacher, he's got kashf and karamat, and he tells you what your heart's feeling, he writes, tells you what you're thinking. What is it? But I can't get a job. He'll write, oh, you get a job, I'll do dua for you. The line will be formed there. Oh, I don't have children. He gives taweez, a child is born, he gives him water, blows on water, all these things. Everything's happening. Because Dajjal will do this. He will make the deceased person alive. Dajjal, who will be saved from Dajjal? He who follows the sunnah will be saved from Dajjal. Only that person. Those who follow the path of the sunnah and they read the kitab of the sunnah, the sunnah ways kitab. Yes, they will be safe from the jah. So you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, so don't waste time. Don't waste time. So, yes, that for example, I told a brother how to put perfume on fragrances. So I said, subhanallah, so beneficial for me. I sat next to you within a minute. You told me such a fantastic action, how to apply the ita, the fragrance. I said, you've come once, so why don't you come to dhikr then regularly? If you got benefit from once, and then excuses. Oh, I've got pain in my leg, I can't sit down too long, it's too late for me, and this and that. This is shaitan. Shaitan, he shows the haq. The haq path Allah shows the biggest kibber is the haq is in front of you and you are rejecting the haq. We also remember this. Haq is in front of you, the truth, the way, and you don't accept it, you reject it because you don't accept it. I don't like this lifestyle. I don't accept this, the person says. This is called kibber azam. Kibber azam, this is what shaitan had, why he suffered. So close to Allah. That the teacher of the angels, shaitan, was the teacher of the angels. So close to Allah. Imagine the ilm that he had, the knowledge. What knowledge he must have had. Technical. But what defeated him? Shaitan? Kibr. Pride, haughtiness, challenging. Me. Me. Because tazkiyah did not occur. Everything else he had, but tazkiyah did not occur within him. Tazkiyah, if he had it, then he'd be an ashik, the lover of Allah. He who does tazkiyah is always the lover of Allah. Remember this. Because tazkiyah develops love, muhabbat. When you do tazkiyah, this is the first sign of the, the, the person who is pure and clean. The first sign physically that's developed by tazkiyah is muhabbat, love. And love is lazim, essential. 
essential. If you don't have love, then the whole case collapses. The first quality that's attribute developed is love after you do tazkiyah. As soon as love comes into you, as soon as love enters into you, then you become the lover of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. Then he's on the path. He's traveling. He's traveling, progressing. That's how great a system Allah Ta'ala has created of tazkiyah. So brothers, Allah's Nabi Sallam has told us clearly that he is, that, for example, committing a crime. He's not purifying himself. He's planted uh, the root. The, the, the root. So for example, you don't clean the garden, the weeds come, spiders come, insects come. When you clean the soil and cultivate it, the flowers grow. Nice. Same way as your batin, your inner state. You don't have attention to cleaning it, purifying it. Subhanallah, and the hadith tells us that don't just have false hopes on your good deeds. I'm doing this deed, I'm doing that deed, and that is stated. He who's got kibr inside him, no deed will be of use to him. His deeds will be a waste as well at the same time. His ibadat will be a waste. Kibr, it will burn away all of the deeds. It, nothing will be visible, all the deeds he practices on the earth, he will not be able to see them in the hereafter. They won't benefit him. Rather, another hadith I'll tell you. Another hadith. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said that that sinful person is better who after sinning that he does tawbah, repents and he repents compared to that person who's got so many deeds and deeds and deeds mountains of deeds but he's got kibr and haughtiness and pride and, he's, and the sinful person who does tawbah is better than that person you understand what I'm saying? you don't understand what I'm saying so what are we inviting ourselves towards? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu is inviting us towards what? do your tazkiyah do your tazkiyah. Wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba. Wal hikmata wa yuzakkihim. Rasulullah Sam came to fulfill this function also. Wa yuzakkihim. He said, I was sent for this reason. So it said like this in the Quran, is it? Or it doesn't say in the Quran? Doesn't it say in the Quran? Yes. But we don't want to sit down. We don't want to sit in the majlis. We don't want to do tazkiyah. Because I don't feel like it. I said, so you will do what your heart says. And you will practice that deen. That then you'll follow that your heart feels and you won't do that what Allah Ta'ala desires. The enjoyment is this, that your nafs doesn't like it, but you do the action that Allah likes you to do. That's the enjoyment. That's the enjoyment then, isn't it? After that. Yes, to practice that, what your nafs doesn't like, like but Allah likes. All the actions of the deen are jayas, first class, high. But according to the system Allah Ta'ala has created, at what time do you do what action? What time do I do this amal? What's important at what time of the day, at what moment? What's lacking me? What's lacking in me? Where should I put more effort? No, what do I like doing? I do practice that always. But thawab is in every action. We say, thawab is in every action. Don't look at thawab. So our position, I've told you, no deed will be useful to you. So we realize the most greatest action is to eliminate the diseases within. So that when you practice, the rest of your life is accepted from you. So why don't our brains and hearts understand these hadith? Why don't our brains understand these messages, our people, our ummah? What's happened? What's the problem? Yes, I haven't understood this problem until today. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so why don't people understand these simple points? Such great hadiths and kitabs, why don't they absorb into our brains what Allah Ta'ala has told us to do? Why don't we do them on that? So, such a severe disease is within that person, individual who doesn't do his tazkiyah, clean his batin, that he is enveloped in kibar. And no deed or ibadah is accepted and he's wasting his time. And that on the day of judgment, and then he'll be pushed and shoved out. Who are you? Who are you? Allah, that will say, get out, get out from here. Get rid of this person. Allah won't even allow him to come near that person. Yes, he can't say, I didn't know, I didn't have the knowledge that the announcements will be made. The hadith are there, we have to learn them, understand? So, the Allah's Nabi Islam, what direction is he assuring us towards? The fikr, first and foremost, should be that I should be clean inside, I shouldn't lie, I shouldn't backbite, I shouldn't have hasad, I shouldn't have envy, I shouldn't have gossip mongering, I shouldn't be angry, I shouldn't trick people, defraud people, no love of dunya, no shahawat, no lust. All of these things take a person towards wrong. Shahawat, lust and passion, takes a person from one place to another place, from one sheikh to another sheikh. All shahawat and desires of a person, or not. Tell me, so what do you like? Run after Allah likes. Wherever Allah Ta'ala sends you, guidance is coming, stick to that. Whether your heart feels like it or not, kill your nafs. And the shaykh is there to crush the desires. That's why he's not there to feed you sweets and mithai. 
He doesn't give mithai and sweets. Rather, he crushes the desires. And his words are bitter. He gives bitter medicines. Bitter medicines. From the teacher, from the sheikh. Yes, they're not sugar-coated tablets. They are pure bitter medicine. He says to the student, consume this. If I tell you mujahidat, then you'll be shocked. Uh, you can't even do this much mujahidat. Well, get up in the morning and come and sit down. Yes? And you want to become walis of Allah. You can't even come in the morning and sit down in the matis. So to become a wali Allah, walayat, what is walayat? Friendship of Allah. How do you attain friendship of Allah? My shaykh told me, rahimahullah, rahmatullah alayhi. What great personalities they were. He didn't say you can't be wali Allah through salah, you can't be wali Allah from any ibadat or deed, not through ibadat. Look here, statement, then I'll, my, my husband, he concluded that statement on this statement. He said, you can't become walayat through salah, pray salah, pray salah, he becomes wali Allah, or cash for vision. He said, he cannot be a wali Allah. That person, this is not the path to become a wali Allah, or friend of Allah. Rather, walayat, friendship of Allah, the definition is different, it's unique. That when your akhlaq e razila, they're eliminated, and the high level of akhlaq comes into your life, that is walayat. Any wali of Allah, he will never be without akhlaq. No, his akhlaq will be complete, seal, and a, a mirror of Rasulullah's akhlaq. And the higher he is, then he'll lower himself and be humble. He won't differentiate the people, he won't look down at people. He, wherever he sits, wherever he is, he will guide and he will steer people in the right direction. And he won't say, oh, this should be my seat and give me honor, give me title. I've seen this. The Peer Sahib, he was in a gathering and he went out angry. He said, I'm not going to speak here. Why, Hasab, you're here. Why not? Public are waiting. No, no, this is not my place to sit. I don't like this gathering, this environment. Or it's not according to my class. Yes. Why didn't you make a proper seat for me and a cushion so I could sit down? This is disrespectful, he said. And he left the gathering. Tell me. This is the truth. What happens today? Yes, so the body trembles and shakes when you hear these examples. Yes, because we don't remember death, we don't remember the mouth, the rajat, we give titles to people, elevate them, etc. But the person is elevated, the more he's high, the lower he becomes himself inside himself, and he's grateful to Allah. Simple, humble, yes? So that person's respect naturally increases in the world, the makhluk, the creation, respect him, and he's grateful to Allah, Allah, this is all your karam, your blessings, your mercy, it's nothing to do with me. It's not my achievement, he's never maghroor, he's not proud. Yes, so I'll tell you takabur, I'll explain to you takabur, I'll tell you hadith so you understand. So, takabur is such a severe disease and illness, there are many punishments for this. In the hereafter, the person who thought he was the highest, mutakabur, remember in this world, he says, I'm the best, I'm the best. That when Allah gives him status and class, then he thinks, I'm the best, I've got this quality, I'm greater than other people, I'm higher than other people. If Allah gives him ilm or knowledge, he starts to think he's better. And everyone else, he looks down at them. Because he has, those other people don't have what he's got. He thinks, I'm this, I'm on this class. Time and time again, he'll keep on referring to his special quality. Say, subhanallah. Yeah, I've got this, I've got this classification, I've got this knowledge, I've got this quality and attribute. You keep on referring to what he's got. Allah has given you karam due to ilm or Quran or hadith or ilm or knowledge or your pious or your, uh, you've got attachment to people who are learned or whatever. This, does this mean that everyone's below you? Subhanallah. Allah has done said, look at his glory. So somebody said, that, oh Prophet of Allah, listen to me and, and the Prophet was was full of sweat. She was an old woman and she wasn't mentally there 100%. She was unwell. And the Sahaba Karam, they thought that the Prophet is in danger. It's taking too long. It's hot. He's suffering. The Prophet said, go further away until I don't stop listening to her. Then this will continue. And this was the akhlaq. But Rasulullah always gave full attention to the people who used to speak to him. Yes, but today, for example, if a person's ill, we won't, for example, give that person assistance. And if somebody is in need in the world, due to worldly benefit, we'll sit with that person for hours. Yes, that's the, the for example, Allah's karam and mercy was that, subhanAllah, uh, for example, sat down with somebody once who was extremely ill. It was difficult, but Alhamdulillah gave me that karam. So this is the signs that Rasulullah has told us that you should persevere and have patience and have sabr when you go through hardship. 
So for us we say is fard for us we need to do this if somebody is given somebody classification and high status then we shouldn't question that person for example we should respect that person who is pious and yes he is being elevated doesn't matter how much he grow, drops down but what we should do is respect that person Allah has given him a rutubah Allah has given him rank and status we should respect that person we should keep him on that status and on that high regard give him the rutubah and due to the respect of that person and to accepting that person then Allah Ta'ala also elevates that person at the same time that Allah Ta'ala has given unique paths and methods of akhlaq so the kibr of that person is going down. And his pride is going down. That even if you're higher in rank and status and you've got qualities and skills, but if you bring yourself down equivalent to another person and you respect that person, you give him regard and you make him feel similar, then Allah says, I like that. That that person I liked, I, you also liked him at the same time. Allah says, I will give you all of the rank and status of thereafter. Do you understand the points I'm making? So don't look at a person who's humble or simple in the world or doesn't have too many material things. That, for example, that somebody sitting on the ground, you say, oh no, Hazrat, I can't sit on the ground as well. No, 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 we won't sit on the ground. No, Shaykh Abdul Isab, we won't sit on the ground. So understand the rutubah and the class that Allah Ta'ala is going to give his ajiz and he's not mutakabir. The signing of the mutakabir, he will make big statements and he will show off. And if you're not present, he'll speak against you and he'll create uh, arguments and strife and discord. So this is the sign of the person who's got kibr. You'll realize that person who speaks nonsense. And there's a big punishment for that person. So for those people in Jahannam, there will be a separate building, separate sector for the mutakabirin, Separate place. And Allah will fill that sector, that building with the mutakabirin, and they will never come out of that place. Who are those mutakabirin? May Allah protect us from having kibr. And this is the punishment for those who got kibr. And because he thought he was so big and better than other people, and he thought he was high class in the world, so the first punishment when he wakes up after death, and he will wake up as an ant, and nobody will pay him any regard, and people will trample on that person with their feet. This will be the consequence of the muqtakabbar person. Why? What a big punishment. Why did he get that punishment? It was in the world, he didn't do tazki, and he didn't look after his akhlaq, he didn't work hard. And this was the kibr inside that person, that for him to improve his akhlaq, he didn't understand that this was important. This is kibr also. Also kibr. So let me explain to you the definition of kibr. The punishments that I've explained to you about kibr, these aren't minor punishments. These are big punishments. Yes, and in Jahannam he will drink the pus, the, the pus of the people of Jahannam he will drink. The person who had, who had kibr and pride, such severe punishments, severe punishments. It's a big sin. So the noble companions has Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu in his hadith. This is narrated in Mishkat and the meaning of the hadith I'll share with you. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So listen clear, clearly here how great hadith this is. The how necessary it is to do tazkiyah. Stated that even if you have a mustard seed of kibber in your heart, an atom's weight, a particle, atom's weight. Ulama Akram, respected scholars are aware of this hadith. That even if you have a mustard seed, an atom's weight, a particle's weight, a dust's weight. A, way, a particle of dust, even that amount of kibr should not be inside you. And you don't clean yourself ever. You say that if a person has never washed his body, and he says he's clean, if he's never washed himself for a month, then obviously he won't have dust on his body, he'll have flies. And the person who has not cleaned his heart all his own life, then is he going to have particles, weight of dirt in his heart? Forget about mustard seed, there will be so much weight of kibber. I stated one atom's weight of kibber inside a person's heart, then he, it's impossible for him to go into paradise. Impossible. Question doesn't arise that he'll go into paradise. If he has the particles weight of kibber. And who's this hint going towards? That extreme effort is required. Extreme effort. Because after expelling the dirt, a person becomes a wali Allah. All the walis of Allah that came to the world, did they have kibber in their hearts? It was their effort, so great, hard work, 200 miles, they traveled all night long, staying awake, all night long doing ibadah, after that, to wash themselves, to clean their heart, to do batin, the ibadat of tazkiyah, purification, and the biggest ibadat of tazkiyah, do you know what it is? The biggest ibadah to achieve tazkiyah, that implements tazkiyah, due to which it becomes wali Allah, it is go to sit in a khanqa and to do your mahasaba, reflection. 
Alhamdulillah, you have sat in a khanka, you spent time in a khanka, even now you sit, yes, that's what you do, isn't it? You come to do dhikr. So look at the khankas Allah Ta'ala has made. How? Yes, in this country, to make a khanka is a great miracle in this country to have a khanka. Seventy years ago, this khanka first was made khanka, nakishbandiya, mujaddadiya, murtazayya. People open their mouths, their jaws drop. What is this khanka? What does it mean khanka? People ask. And people started gossiping and criticizing. From everywhere you had the call and the clamor. I said, inshallah, the result you'll hear very soon. Then you automatically you'll understand what is the khanka. This darvesh, I'm following the hukum, the sheikh in Gadai Sharif's instruction. And the khankas are being created here in this country. Say subhanallah. Yes, so mashallah. You will have eaten the langar as well in the khanka as well. The food you will have cooked and eaten and spent time and slept the night in the khanka and done it the kaf in khanka as well. Yes. In England I'm talking about the, this is the country and here Allah has constructed what? The Gadai Sharif Sheikh's khankas in this country. Subhanallah. Okay. Understood. Darul Ulums are there. Yes. Institutes are there. Quran madrasas are there. But Allah's wali, he gave us a unique glance. He said, everything is there. But how will you clean yourselves with it? And everyone will have germs and dirt and bacteria. Go and get rid of the germs and bacteria from their hearts. The dirt. The ulama kram, the respected scholars. Mashallah, they have also cleaned themselves. Those people of understanding who had wisdom. They understood that all this ilm will go to waste if we don't purify our batin. The hukam, even an atom's weight of kibber is remaining in your heart. Then how much extreme effort is required to clean the batin in the khanka? I'll say again to you, the Malat al the rank in Jannah, Mu'min Sahib used to come. Mu'min Sahib, all night long he used to sit in my khanka. And I used to be in the takaf. I used to see, who is this alim sitting? I didn't know him, this scholar. Yeah, tell me. Was he mad? He wasn't mad. Today he's eating the fruits. Because he had done his tazki. He came to England from India to do speeches. He came from India to give speeches in Ramadan. But soon he was free in the evening. Straight he'd come to the khanka and stay sitting there. The khanka all night long. Tasbih. And there's no drama in the khanka. Is there during the night? Yeah, people are making effort. So I thought, who is this person? Malana. They said he's come from India. He comes from India. I said, I didn't know him before that. So eventually what happened? He arrived to Allah. He arrived to Allah. Yes, imagine the fruit he's getting now. Because the hukumi understood the instruction that one atom's weight of kibr if there's in your heart, in your batin, then you cannot enter into paradise. Salah, ibadat, etc. And we, the hukum that we've been given, let's think about that. That how can kibr come in? So what is kibr? Pride. So this hadith has Abdullah bin Masood, he stated, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said that if anyone has an atom's weight of kibbutz inside him, he can't go into paradise? Totally not. At, absolutely not. He cannot go into paradise. So, then the Tashri, the Sahaba Akram, they, they requested and questioned again, Oh Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no man? So a person puts on new shoes, new clothes, new items, new garments, new what, for example, or many new things today, new jacket, and, and a nice jacket, he has a desire for looking good. Is he got kibber, this person? And he stated, no. Look at this point. Kibber is related to the heart. The disease is embedded in the heart. Yes, the kibber is embedded in the heart. Yes, so this cannot be kibber. A Prophet of Allah said, if a person, he's wearing good things, nice things, until, unless there's one thing present within him, that he looks at other people as if they're below him, below him, lower than him. This is kibber. I've got good clothes on, oh, look at him, or oh, sit behind me, you don't have good clothes. I've got a big house, or oh, he's got smaller house. He doesn't even have a house. When you have this competition within you, this is the kibber, this is the pride. Looking at other people, demoting them, looking down at them. Hazrat Abdul Ubaidullah Harar, Rahmatullah he was a sheikh in the next month. This is Allah. If you look at his big house, people used to return from his house. Say, he can't be a peer, he can't be a sheikh. Then they used to do the sort of, then they called back, that I am a sheikh, come back, come back. Then you'll understand afterwards. So this is a sift, an attribute, the quality of that specific point. That when your bathing inside is clean, 
then you will stop differentiating and classifying people. I'm doing this so that people consider me better and famous and nice or so that I can elevate myself to a high level. No. Then another thing is developed. Then he starts to become grateful for the name as Allah has given to him. Allah has given him money, wealth, and dunya, etc. And he utilizes it for the sake of Allah. And he says, Allah, I'm grateful to you. And he's not playing games or does somebody like me? Does he dislike me? Do they think I'm good or I'm rich or I bought a house? Look at my house. He's showing it to people, telling people, showing of look at this, look at mine, look at this I've got, look at that I've got. No, he is just worried by himself. Allah has given me all of this. Subhanallah, I'm grateful to you and I'm enjoying this. I like this uh, watch you've given to me. It's very nice. It gives me the good reminder of the time and it works in the night and I can do dhikr in a nice way. Say Subhanallah. So the grateful, isn't it? He looks at his watch, the watch is functioning. What's the value today? 500 pounds, okay. And 5,000 to that value I've worn the watch as well, Alhamdulillah. Why? In Saudi Arabia, I bought it. This much money I spent, 5,000 real. Okay, fine, in the story. Why? Because it's glowing. Now I said, you know, I need this. In that night, it will glow. I can see the time, so I can do thicker on time. Yes, I can wear that one day and show it to you as well. So never was there competition. I've got this watch. I, I, I don't even know myself what is the value. This is the barakah of Hazasab, my sheikh. The, you clean yourself inside. Such purity, then there's no limit after that. This is not, the kabar cannot come inside you as long as you don't consider other people below you, lower than you, less well off than you. So what is kibar? That due to a quality and attribute that Allah has given to you and you see that other people don't have that and you can deserve yourself greater that I am this, he is this, go behind me. Get back. Don't sit with me. So that sheikh, that teacher, that alim, that scholar, that pious elder who desires that my murid, my murid, he respects me and he doesn't spread my name, then there's no bigger thief than that person. Say subhanam. Yes, he's not an alim, he's not a sheikh al he's not a wali he's not a peer, he's not a kutub, nothing. That person who has that design inside his heart, that I stand and everyone should stand for me and plead with their hands in front of me that I'm a sheikh and accept me and I'm a peer, I'm an alim. I'm a scholar, I'm a muhaddith. There's no bigger thief than that person who seeks uh, recognition. He's mutakabir and he will go into Jahannam. Yes. Yes, I said this in advance that you need to have to understand that the people, for example, whether he wants it or not, that if he doesn't care about other people recognizing him, if other people respect him, then this dhanam of Allah Ta'ala, Ta'ala is elevating his status in the dunya. But he shouldn't have that desire. That's the difference in the thinking. Yes, he has no care, no regard. People are picking up his shoes, helping him, elevating him. But he ignores it. He knows in his heart that this is rubbish. And he doesn't care for their regard and their respect because he's worried about him, his own self. And other people are busy in their own thing. Because in their heart, Allah Ta'ala has instilled awe and respect for that individual. That Allah has elevated the respect in their minds and their heart. Whether he is like that or not, Allah Ta'ala says, when I make somebody a wali, make somebody my friend, then I call Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel in the heavens, oh Jibreel Allah says, announce in the heavens that this man has become my friend and my wali. In the heavens, the Jibreel alayhi salam announces to all the angels. So in the world, a man sitting on a straw mat. And the angels are introduced to that person. After that is announced in the world, all the creatures and the oceans and the fish in the sea, they recognize the wali Allah in the world. Ibn Adam, yes, he threw a needle into the water, isn't it? And that he used to sew his uh, cloak with. And somebody said to him, you used to be a king and now you're wearing torn patch clothes. And he threw his needle into the water. He said, I was a king. And you're useless and you think you're a king. And you used to look now. He said, oh, fish, go and bring the needle back that I threw into the water. And all the, the fish came back and they had a gold needle in the mouth. And he said, no, 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 I want that needle that I threw. And then, so when I show me now, we'll be sat there all day long waiting. He threw the needle. He said, take out of my needle. And every creature understood his language at that time. Yes, the flies and the spiders and the wasps and the pigeons, everything in the creation. Listen to the wallah when the sheikh, subhanallah, is asking. And he said, what's he brought? He said, my needle wasn't the gold. He said, that same needle I threw. Then they went back down again, the fish, and brought that needle out that he threw. He said, this is... Tell me, he said, I was a king before, I wasn't a king, I'm the king now, he said. Say, subhanallah. So this is a separate point. 
where a person, his respect is increasing in the world, people are going, standing for him, Shaykh al-Adis, alim, scholar, and we say that he's a thief, the people are standing for him. He's not demanding that they stand for him. He's not demanding they respect him. He doesn't care. But those who are standing, they are showing, Allah says that they are demonstrating according to their understanding and mind, that the person who loves me, Allah says, my wali, look at his respect in the world. Then Allah says, look at how much my regard is for that person. And look at my glory, Allah, Allah says. So the only Allah, subhanAllah, they are the principal on the world. And look at the respect they gain. So Allah says, imagine my glory and my magnificence. So do you understand? The kabbur and the difference... Or oh, you don't understand. So this is the love. So, for example, if love comes out of the heart and it, it goes, then, for example, if you don't understand the respect of a wali Allah, you dishonor him, you took rubbish against him, and you speak like a jahil. But that person, what is he? That they don't affect him. He still smiles at you because he doesn't consider himself good. He doesn't consider himself good. He says, oh, you're like this. I don't respect you. He says, okay, fine. I seek forgiveness. Maybe I'm weak. He says, huh? Huh? I'm swearing at him, I'm criticizing him, he thinks he's pious, and I'm saying he's rubbish, and he doesn't take it negatively. If he's respected, it doesn't make a difference. If he's disrespected, it doesn't make a difference. Because he's not looking for recognition, say subhanAllah. And this is, this is in reality a person who doesn't have kibbutz inside him. So if he's got a watch, he wears it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. If he's got a nice jacket, fine. If he doesn't have it, no. He doesn't care, oh he's got this, why haven't I got this? Allah says, this is not kibbutz. Kibbutz is that person who dishonors a person, disrespects a person, lowers a person and thinks he's better than us. I'm this, I have this knowledge. Look at my son. Ten hours he praises his son. My putter, he's this, he's learned this. Look at his business, his shop, he's wealthy and he earns this much money, this much turnover. This is a useless individual in the world and in the hereafter. And no deeds will you be of use to him. Nothing will benefit him here or in the hereafter. Jahil, extreme jahil in this world in the hereafter, who sits down and praises himself, praises his children, praises his wealth. For this reason, so that people worship me and recognize me in the world. So that I have an impression cast into the minds of people. So I can overawe people in the world. He has that desire. Yes, first they teach children the deen, then they praise, look at my son, Alim, my child is a hafiz, and this and that. So why do you go and show off in the world with these uh, claims? Say, subhanAllah. Why do you have to go and spread this and be grateful to Allah? Quietly. And yeah, do dua, that Allah make him fulfill the justice of what he has learned. So my brothers, this is the first hadith that I shared with you. And that was the, the, the subject. There's a da'wah that the Rasulullah is giving to us invitation. If we depart this world without tazkiyah, this is extreme concern. Imagine I'm a calm in the grave and the hereafter. And those who have left, what is happening to them? So tazkiyah is essential. Do you understand what is tazkiyah today? This is tazkiyah, purification, clean, cleaning our inner self. So this line, this path, be firm on it, steadfast, understand your deficiencies within, reflect and ponder always. Never go into the trap that I am fine, I've achieved, I've realized. No, you can't achieve by your own self. Until the other person doesn't smack you and clear the dust off you, you go to your sheikh say, I'm a thief, I'm a sinner, I'm this. That's the enjoyment. Yes? So control yourself. Realize what you are. Thousands of diseases within us, de- thousands of defects within us. And on top of us, people are giving you salam and praising you and you become big-headed, I'm this, I'm that. Not at all. Concern, fikr for yourself, if someone is respecting you, etc. Don't go towards that. Be worried about yourself. What's inside yourself. Yes, people say, mashallah, he's got imama, he's handsome, look how he does this, and he's a wali Allah, he's running this business, and he's pious, and he does dhikr, and he does istighfar, and he's praying. Don't listen to their words. You just look at your sins, I'm a fraudster, I deceive people, and I've done this and I've done that. Look at the negatives. How can I be pious? Say, how can I be pious? But you want to earn the dunya, that people will respect me, and then I will solve my issues in the world. And this is not happening for me in the world, and I'll show my piety and my zakir, and then people will help me and assist me in the world. No, this is wrong. That person, can he ever succeed? A person who has that objective in life, tell me. Can a person, such issues and problems in the world, even if you attain what you want in the world, will you be successful? It's for a lie you are doing this. So beware, don't praise me like this in this way. Be straightforward. That for example, if, I want, if you want to attain something from somebody, or get somebody to help you in something, then just present yourself in a truth way. Accept me like that. No, he's that, he's this. And you are uh, deceiving people with false claims. It says, so for example, 
that person, oh, he had imama, he had beard, he was tricking people, he was lying to people, he used to consume the money of people, he used to earn haram, and he used to run after the wealth and run after the dunya, and houses and cars was his life. Yes, and just to get the cars and the houses and the material things, he had the imama and the beard and white clothes, and he showed to people, he became pious, he became Junaid Baghdadi. No, look at yourself. Look at yourself within, I'm wrong, I have these negatives, I have these sins, I have these deficiencies, I'm a thief. And the person keep on crying to Allah, turning to Allah, present yourself to your teacher, expose yourself, all your life work hard and effort so that you don't leave any sin within you. And do dua for those people who don't know this, who don't realize this, who don't understand this, who don't make effort on this, they don't do mujahida, do dua for them. Yeah, the Quran is announcing what you alimhumul Qurana wal hikmata wa yuzaki malas is giving you Quran, hikmah sunnah, and I want you to purify yourselves as well. If you're not pure, then you'll, these two things in advance will fail the Quran and the Sunnah. Let's do dua to Allah. Allah Taala gives. How does a person become pure? I explained to you, isn't it? Yes, there's only one path to attain purity. And what is that? Subhanallah, straight one path. That get the company of a wali Allah, of a sheikh, of a teacher. That's the path. Kunu ma'asadiqeen. Straightforward path. Allah, so you're looking for a wali Allah, that's your job. A sheikh who is a wali Allah, through whom you attain Allah's nameness. Yes? Then you don't select, then just stick to him. Spend hours, listen to him, whatever he says. You must do that. Because you need to expel the kibr from within you. It's not a minor action. You need to expel the kibber from within you. Pick his shoes up, do this, serve him, help him, assist him. Don't think left and right. Don't think twice that I can't leave this path because I have to lie, die after a few days and go to the raft and I'll be, I'll be a loser if I've got kibber inside me. Whatever he says, instructions, guidance, advice, accept it. If he's strict or if he's soft, if he's high or low, etc., you have come to get your cure. Just like you go to the doctor. Whatever the doctor formulates, injection, you'll accept it, won't you? Whatever medicine he'll give to you, you'll eat it, won't you? Consume it. Whatever he advises you, prescribes you, if you don't do that, then he'll say, okay, go, fine, carry on, you're sick, go to the hospital. Yes, and he'll cure you. Same way as the spiritual physicians, the mashayikh, they do the same treatment. Same way, same method. Yes, yes, the body and the ruh, they're together and they're attached. So the physical doctors, they'll give you tablets or injection, but the ruh, the treatment, the sheikh gives him his own way with his unique method. And you have to persevere, you have to take the injections, you'll scream, you'll struggle, you won't like it maybe, etc. I'm just giving examples. So here, for example, the doctor will treat your flu and cold, and the sheikh will treat your kibber, your pride. That's the difference. So all these things, find a sheikh, look for a teacher, a master of tazkiyah. Not the sheikh that you like, look for that teacher who will do your islah, rectification, where your islah will take place. And what's the method for finding a sheikh who will do islah? Rasulullah gave us the hint for this. So how should we find a teacher? Very simple method. First look at how much sunnah is that person practicing. Start with the sunnah condition. Yes, is he mutaba sunnah? Does that person practice the sunnah in his life? Does he observe the sunnah, implement the sunnah? That's point number one. Number two, when you sit in his gathering majlis, then do the words of the deen penetrate your heart? And when you leave his gathering and leave, do those words remain in your heart and affect you? If these things are present, then grab that person, he's the wali of Allah. Grab that person. So the sheikh, you're looking for a sheikh, you'll go to every sheikh, sit in the majlis, look for these three signs, how much sunnah it taba, how much words of the sunnah himself, how much is he observing and practicing the sunnah? Yes, if he is practicing on his ibadah, that according to the sunnah or not, look at these things after that, look that his words and advices, are they coming into your heart, absorbing your heart? Those words that are coming to you, automatically the, the path you're looking for, the solution, and your cure is coming automatically, say subhanallah. Automatically, the question marks, the doubts in your heart, they're all being resolved through that majlis. Yes? And all the dirt is coming out. Oh yes, this question, this doubt, answered, answered, answered. Third thing, when you depart and leave that gathering, then you remember all that guidance. The man was right. Yeah, he was right. He said good things for sure. He said, so these three signs you see, Rasulullah said, beware, don't leave that person, don't leave the guidance, grab hold of that person's company. As long as death doesn't come, don't leave his company and you will be 
promoted. Say Subhanallah. So don't waste time. Look like this. See like this. If you find him, then stick to him. And if you want to keep looking, keep looking. But don't waste time. Don't waste time. And for looking for the teacher for guidance, you don't have to go to the North Pole, South Pole. Allah says, I'm not giving you pain and burden. Just to look, have the knee. Allah says, the Sheikh will come near to your home. And he'll knock on your door possibly. And you'll find him near to your home, the teacher. Allah Ta'ala doesn't want to give us difficulty. But at least have the right knee, Allah says, to find the teacher. To get guidance. Allah says, you correct your intention. You desire to be good. And leave the rest to me. Allah says, I'll sort it out for you. I'll sort it out for you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين شفيع المسلمين الحبيب الذي من الله وصل إلى سيدنا محمد نبينا ميسى وعشيم وحد المؤمنين وصريات ومسلمين لا محمد ولا علي محمد ولا علي محمد ولا علي سلام اللهم اغفر لنا سلام على عزل ولا عزل وجل لنا وقد ولا عزل وقد عزل اللهم اغفر لنا وقد قلت ما سرت وعلم ما سرت قلت أنت المطلوب وأخر لا إله إلا يا الله الرحيمين ابن فزل قمسي حماري بن حكم آخر يا الله ما يتوبون قبول فرما يا الله ما يبادون قبول فرما يا الله ما يبادون بصاف فرما يا الله ما يبادون قبول فرما يا الله توتي فوتي جواد لحقتنا قبول فرما يا الله توتي فوتي جو مهنة تكتب إميران قبول فرما يا الله توهي لهم فرما توهي كن فرما ما من المولى يا من المولى ولا على بعض خلال يا الله ما يبادون بعض يا من الموسي بلا بلا ما يسفاي كل ما بين يا الله يا الله هم سكابل بنا ذيك هم كم نجاسك يا الله هم سكوات بنا ذيك هم كم نجاسك يا من المولى هواي ما وتسان كل ما بين يا الله هم الزاهي بادني بادني وسيف كل ما بين يا الله هم الكرم الركبت نسيف كل ما يا الله هم الرزق الركبت نسيف كل ما يا الله هم السهد الركبت نسيف كل ما هم علي أولادنا يا الله الركبت نسيف كل ما هم علي أولادنا كم يا أكون تندق بنا يا الله جو بیمار ہیں پریشان ہیں مصیبت سے ظاہر ہیں مولا ان کی مصیبتوں کو دور کرو یا اللہ جو رشتوں کو تلاش میں ان کو رشتہ تاہ کرو یا اللہ جو رشتوں کو تلاش میں ان کو رشتہ تاہ کرو یا اللہ ان کی پریشانی کو دور کرو میرے مولا یا اللہ ان سے رشتہ تاہ کرو یا اللہ جن حضرات نے اپنی روانی کے لئے دعاوں کے لئے کرنے کے روانی کو دور کرو لندن میں ایک فیملی یہ پوری بیمار ہے کوئیوٹ سے میرے مولا ان کو صحت و قام اللہ ح بورٹن ایک فیملی بیمار ہے میرے اللہ مولا ان کو سب کو صحت نصیب فرما یا اللہ تو اپنے کرم سے اپنے فضل سے میرے مولا تو ہماری دعاوں کو قبول فرما ہماری مجلس کو قبول فرما آج کی مجلس کو قبول فرما جو سب آئیں سب کی بخشش فرما جو جہاں بھی اس مجلس میں حاضر ہیں ان کے ساری دعاوں کو جائز دعاوں کو قبول فرما